there could not be so many people around today. It's more than uh, my uh, fourth year class. So I hope you guys uh, are going to be sort of like uh, so fascinated with uh, my topic today, given the fact that we, as we're sitting here, we're collecting uh, our data as well. Uh, so this is quite, quite going to be an interesting topic. Anyway, my name is uh, Peggy C. Paul, not Peggy C. Four. Uh, I know that they always get it wrong from the London Symphony. The P-H-O always uh, translates to F, but I'm Peggy C. Potwala. I'm at the uh, University of Johannesburg. I'm running the Institute for Intelligent Systems, and uh, we are a year and a couple of months old. So we're still getting there. So you guys are... Uh, in case I get stuck, you'll understand where I'm coming from. Anyway, uh, my outline today, um, introduction, I mean, I'm just gonna, gonna give you an idea what big data is all about. Uh, characteristics, uh, harnessing big data. Um, as to who's generating big data, I did highlight that as well, sitting here, we're collecting data. Your cell phones are in motion, people are texting and stuff like that. Uh, and who's processing the big data? That's a question that I'll be posing to you guys towards the end of the talk. Then there's the structure of big data as well. I'll be talking about that and how the model has changed in recent years. Um, and what's driving big data, value of big data analytics, and challenges in handling big data. We all know that uh, we're bound to have challenges when we collect all this uh, kind of like uh, our data, especially since it comes it comes in in sort of like a huge sort of like volumes. So the outline is still like just a continuation of this. I'm not going to cover all these things. You guys should know this stuff. Uh, big data technology, application of big data. I'm going to talk about smart cities just to show as to how big data has played a role in the smart city concept. Its impact uh, in terms of uh, uh, information technology. How is big data made an impact on that? Uh, benefits of big data, that's why probably I'm standing here, I've got a job at UJ because uh, I did stuff on big data. Uh, future of big data, Africa, we sort of like falling behind, I'll sort of high highlight that as well, as to where we are sort of like lacking and the way forward as to how Africa can benefit. Summary, obviously I can't um, finish my talk without giving an idea of what we do at UJ, the Institute for Intelligent Systems, just one or two slides so that you guys can have an idea. Uh, then I'll just give you uh, key references. I always like giving uh, references regarding my talk. So that you guys, if you're interested in the topic, you can go and read and sort of like, uh, sort of like um, uh, uh, equip yourself with whatever we'll be working on. Okay. Okay. Difficult, obviously. I mean, the importance of big data, big data and data science. People always confuse the two. Uh, big data, I heard a student saying that big data is data science. I said, hey, wait a minute. Big data, you collect the data, and data science, that's when you utilize the data, extract sort of like useful information. So you guys don't confuse the two concepts. Uh, so that's why I've highlighted that collection does not mean discovery. The data science discovers important patterns in the data. The big data, you collect the data. You haven't done anything as yet, but you're just collecting it. Uh, burst into the scene in the first decade of the 21st century. People, they say it's the next best thing in the IT world, whatever that means. Uh, first organizations to embrace it, uh, Amazon, you guys, I'm sure you use Amazon to buy your stuff. Uh, there's eBay, it's quite popular in the US and the UK. Uh, there's Facebook, there's Google, there's LinkedIn, and quite a number of uh, sort of like organizations that utilize it. Big data analytics, top five, our issue, single most important way to achieve competitive advantage. As you can see, 59% of the executives claims that. They claim that uh, our big data analytics is the way forward uh, in terms of uh, our big data. Data scientists, they claim that uh, uh, it's the sexist job of the 21st century, whatever that means. But um, I got that from the Harvard Business Review. Um, so it shows that it's got a future. I mean, it's uh, people are are working on these kind of things and uh, being a data scientist, I, mean, I know that in the US it's, it's, quite, uh, it's quite big as well. So they, they claim all these kind of things. Uh, I'll just give you a past of, to what people have done. Big data, similar to small data, people, they confuse the, the two concepts, but it's bigger in size. Big data requires um, different approaches, techniques, tools, 
and architecture. That's where my research comes into play. How do you sort of like discover this knowledge from the big data? So all these uh, techniques and tools that come into play. So you aim to solve problems, so all problems in a better way. Uh, it generates value from storage, processing of large quantities of digital information. Uh, a good example is SKA. I can't even read that, but it's getting a lot of uh, astronomical data per day. So you can imagine how, how they're going to process that data. Be massive data set. Walmart, I hear that they handle one million customer transactions per hour. How do they deal with that kind of information? How does it benefit Walmart in terms of moving forward? There's also the Facebook handle, unfortunately I don't have Facebook, handles 40 billion photos from its uh, user base. Massive kind of like data coming in and out. But how does Facebook utilize that information in terms of moving forward and making uh, it sort of like um, organization much stronger? Decoding of human, Jimon originally took 10 years to process, uh, now it can take one week. All through big data and uh, and uh, machine learning and data mining and artificial intelligence. I'm, sure, I'm not sure whether you can see this slide. I'm gonna just sort of like summarize the characteristics of big data, transactions, interactions, and observations. Uh, obviously, you need uh, uh, quite a number of things. I mean, petabytes, terabytes. It comes in lots of kind of like quantities. Right? So it's very important that we, we sort of like uh, get a feel of what uh, we're gonna be discussing. Also, big data, it's complexity. It's very complex. If you're gonna be getting like a massive of data from Facebook, 40 million sort of like photos, how are you gonna process that? It becomes more and more complex. The volume, I've just highlighted that it's massive and also the complexity and the, and the speed. Obviously you need systems that can process these things fast. That's why I've highlighted the speed sort of like concept. So infrastructure becomes more and more important. Fortunately in South Africa we've got the, the higher performance computing sort of like a department in Cape Town or you can have remote access and you can able to sort of like analyze this, this data. Thanks to the CSIR as well. Uh, just a continuation of the volumes. I mean, I've just, uh, some of the things I'm just gonna skip. I'm just gonna give you an idea. It's increasing exponential. I've already highlighted that each and every day. And that's why we need uh, sort of like techniques that are gonna, are gonna be able to, to sort of like solve the, the problem. Okay, still on complexity, various formats, types, uh, text, numerica, there are images. I mean, I do stuff on image and signal processing as well. So all these things, they come into play as well. Sometimes you get the images, sometimes you get uh, text, anything, but it's still data. You have, to ab you have to be able to sort of like uh, process this kind of information. Static data, streaming data, mobile phones, messages coming in. Uh, th that's what we call the trend of uh, streaming data in real time. Uh, single application been generating many types of uh, sort of like data. So extract knowledge, all these types of data need to be linked together. Obviously you've got a data set, you want to extract sort of like useful information from the data. All these concepts, they come into play. So it's very important that uh, you're able to sort of like uh, work on this kind of like problems. Okay, data is a uh, Oh, data is begin. Anyway, data is generated fast, they need to be processed. Uh, we've got online data analytics. Uh, I don't know what I did prepare the slides myself, so <laughs> you should blame me as well. So examples, I mean, ex-promotions, there's healthcare monitoring. Those are just examples that uh, are, are sort of like highlighted that are related to, to sort of like big data. Um, so obviously, there are sort of like characteristics where data is sort of like classified. It's the volume, it's the velocity, it's the variety. Some people have included the last one, which is called uh, veracity. So whenever you're in doubt, data in doubt, you've got sort of like uncertainty. You are sort of like uncertain. I, I, I always refer to this as knowledge discovery uh, under uncertainty, because at, at the end of the day, even though you are extracting information, there are sort of like uncertainties in the data itself. So that's why I've, some people have added that. There's also missing, these data quality issues. That has to be taken into account as well. So I'll be highlighting that uh, later on in my talk uh, as well. Okay. So how do we harness this data? Online transaction processes. There's online analytic processing. I'm sure you guys have heard of 
data warehousing, where all this data is kept in place, this database uh, management systems. Some of you guys are working in companies and you already have got this in place. Uh, and there's also big data architectures and technology, whereby you're looking at real-time uh, analytics, uh, sort of like processing. So this is how you harness the data. Most of, most, the most common one is the, the data warehousing. Uh, who's generating the data? Social media networks, I've already highlighted Facebook, uh, Twitter, and things like that. Uh, then you've got scientific instruments, SKA, we've got satellites now being installed in Cape Town. Uh, you're collecting all sorts of data. Mobile devices, I've already highlighted that. That is what's sitting here, people are re receiving SMSs, some are phoning, some are doing all sorts of things. So in that way, you're able to sort of like collect data. So these are the kind of like, uh, 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 sort of like um, uh, methods of generating sort of like data. Sensor technology and networks, that's quite a common one as well, whereby you've got sensors and they're able to collect data. They, I know that South Africa is still sort of like struggling in terms of uh, infrastructure and the resources. Uh, for example, uh, I always uh, see, I mean, whenever I go to work, there's this intersection at UJ, I think it's Kingsway and University Road. There are lots of accidents there. Imagine if you had sensors that would predict, uh, that would uh, sort of like collect data, and you're able to predict the likelihood of an accident happening in that intersection. That will help uh, a lot. But we need uh, policies in place so that you can install cameras or sensors there. But by so doing, you can able to collect it. This concept, I'm, I'm also going to highlight it later on when we look at smart cities, whereby we always talk about smart cities, but you don't have enough resources to sort of like um, maintain that. Anyway, the progress in information is no longer hindered by the ability to collect data. Data is collected time and time and again. Before we used to complain, no, we don't have resources and stuff like that. But as we're sitting here, we're collecting data. It's how we utilize the data that becomes uh, sort of like an important like uh, problem. Okay, processing big data, mapping data to programming wet network, connecting, extracting data from storage, transforming data from storage. All these are kind of like concepts that uh, are sort of like in place at the moment. There's also what we call Hadoop and MapReduce. These are just sort of like architectures whereby that's where the data would be sort of like collected and put into place. So you don't want to worry about the, the terms that I've used here, but uh, in case you're interested, you can always email me and uh, we can look into it as well. Okay, structure of big data. Uh, I did mention that it's a bit complex. One, you could have structured data, you could have uh, semi-structured, you can have unstructured. Unstructured is the most complex one because data just comes in, uh, but you have, oh, should I stop? Oh, but um, data is, uh, it's uh, sort of like unstructured, that's the most complex one, whereby even in this day and age, I always have students who will be working on that so that they could come up with methods of how to deal with that. Unstructured, it means that you have to process the data for it to be structured so that you can be able to use the methods or the models uh, that will extract the important information that you're looking at. So it's important. I've just given an example. It represents only 5 10% of informatics data. Just highlight uh, in, in terms of that. I've given a sort of like a, uh, a figure here as to how you could uh, move from structured to sort of like unstructured data. So video data, audio data, those are kind of like data that's a bit complex to, to analyze. Okay, the model has changed. I did mention that when I started, old model, few companies are generating data, all others are consuming the data. We collect the data, people are gonna be using it. But now, all of us are generating data. So things have changed, and all of us are consuming data. So it's getting more and more and more complex. So old model was easy. I collect the data, you come to me, hey man, I'm doing a project on credit risk modeling. Can you supply me the data? I'll give you the data. But now you may find that you're collecting your own credit risk data uh, on your cell phone or Facebook or whatever. Then it means you can also use the data yourself. So the, the new model has um, sort of like uh, help us in, in terms of generating data and consuming it. Okay, what is driving big data? Predictive analytics. Uh, I always give an example uh, of myself when I came back from UK. Uh, all banks were not happy with me. They didn't want to give me a loan because I didn't have a credit history. I've been away 
for quite a number of years, I think 10 to 15 years. But I told them that, okay, I could give you the UK credit history, but they still refused, saying, no, we need South African credit history. How, how do you deal with that problem? Does it mean I don't have to get a loan? I've got a job, permanent job, and that was a problem. So now it means you can able to develop models that will say, even though some information is missing, let's sort of like uh, uh, decide on whether this guy will get a loan or not. So that's where predictive analytics comes into play. Same uh, with uh, uh, diabetic uh, prediction or diabetic diagnosis. All you need is the attributes of the of whatever patient in terms of age, uh, sex, and uh, and other sort of like uh, attributes. Then you can able to determine whether the likelihood that person will be diabetic A or diabetic B. Another good example is student performance. I like that because I'm I'm, I'm in academia. You can predict the likelihood of a student failing or passing engineering given his historic background. Metric results, parents, oh yes. Someone is not agreeing with me. But it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, um, it's the predictive analytics that help. Fingerprint prediction. Imagine if police, uh, they get fingerprints, they can able to narrow the search by sort of like uh, they've got an unknown instance. They want to predict where the fingerprints are coming from and they put it in a system. The likelihood, for example, that the fingerprints will come from, let's say, Houghton province. So they don't have to bother about the other provinces. They just focus on Houghton. That's another predictive analytics thing. So it avoids all the, it, it saves costs, the time, and, 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 and other things as well. So that's why it, it becomes sort of like useful. These intelligence tools are, are related to my injury, which I had, whereby I had no clue what an Achilles tendon uh, rupture was. Imagine if it was a business intelligence tool, like go online. What's the likelihood that uh, uh, squash will lead to an Achilles tendon? You can create a, a business intelligence tool. And where is the injury likely to occur? Are people in the housing likely to be injured more than, uh, for example, KZN? Business intelligence tool can be able to, to do that for you. So all those things are, are quite important as well. Okay, value of big data analytics, real time in nature than traditional data warehouses, traditional data warehouse architectures, shared nothing, massive parallel processing. All this is just the value of data analytics. How do you get from analyzing data? How do you get from uh, using data mining or machine learning given the, the big data? So all those things that uh, are okay, I've given an example of big data analytics and, uh, and data warehouse appliance. Okay, challenges. Of course there are challenges. Uh, this data at all, it's unstructured. Uh, there are policies involved. Uh, there are privacy rules and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, the bottleneck is the technology. Do we have enough resources in Africa to be able to, to crack this problem? I'll be highlighting uh, uh, that later on as to why we have fallen behind in Africa in terms of uh, big data and all this kind of like techniques. New architectures, algorithms. Techniques are needed. Uh, mathematics, critical, statistics, all those are critical, even communication. Because, I mean, you can imagine a student who's done data science, but he can't present his stuff to clients in order to get funding. So communication becomes also critical. It's one sort of like um, concept that has been left out by most, uh, by most uh, speakers, whereby they only talk about uh, algorithms and stuff, but they don't touch the communication part. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to communicate in order to get funding to solve these problems. Also, technical skills, I've already highlighted that in dealing with big data. Ooh. Just the big data landscape, I mean, I've sort of like vertical apps and all these kind of things. These are things that have sort of like evolved in terms of, uh, in terms of big, big data. Skip. Big data technology. Uh, you can stop me if you think I'm moving too fast. It's just that... Uh, I'm, I'm rushing to Africa. I just want to give an idea as to how Africa has fallen sort of like behind. That's just uh, moving parts, terabytes. I've already highlighted that uh, this now in form of a, of a graph. Obviously in academia, we, these are the techniques we use. We use MATLAB. I'm sure some of you guys have, uh, have uh, used MATLAB before. There's SAS, there's HPSS. All these uh, software are there and you can able to utilize them. But uh, the only problem with big data, you need uh, it's the memory problem, whereby you need software that are able to deal with uh, sort of like uh, 
uh, memory problems, deep insight and fast data. So that's kind of like uh, the moving parts when you're explaining big data. Okay, smart cities. I, I just included this slide because it's very important just to show you as to the impact big data can have. Smart cities aren't far from uh, dream of the future. Everyone is talking about them. Uh, big data plays a key role in terms of that. Interconnection of cities, internet of things. Everyone, I'm sure some of you guys, most of you have read about internet of things. Connectivity. I know that you're able to communicate. I've given sort of like ideas of us or intelligent systems, uh, which I always refer to as the root of big data. Because in order to develop a system, or in order to come up with a model that's gonna work, you need an intelligent system. And to, to sort of like come up with an intelligent system, you need data to be able to do that. So big data becomes critical. You can't develop a system without data. So that's why it becomes uh, sort of like important. You can see this, there's traffic, smart. I mean, imagine if uh, coming here from Pretoria, I just use uh, a card, how train, taxi, and I'm able to land here. That's a sort of like a smart city, city thing. Uh, there's uh, other things like energy, utilities. We have, uh, we have uh, um, heard of ESCOM, power, uh, demand and supply of power. We have had problems before. There's retail, uh, there's healthcare issues, airports, social services, etc. All these things are very critical when you're looking at, uh, if you're driving the concept of smart cities, which is why probably the intelligent systems uh, uh, unit was set up at UJ. I'm sure at the back of their mind that the smart city sort of like vision that one day, maybe 20 or 25 years time, imagine if we had all this in place in Johannesburg or in other cities as well. That would be great. So that's uh, a good application of big data analytics. Okay, the sad story is that nothing has been done in Africa. You can see that. I mean, it's uh, Europe, North America, Pacific, uh, Asia Pacific, Latin America, smart cities are, I've sort of like ranked them. There's nothing in Africa. And you ask yourself, have we been sort of like forgotten in Africa? Does it mean that we, uh, we, we, we don't mean a lot? I mean, in terms of uh, uh, developing uh, things or solving our, our problems in the African continent, given all our economic wars, big problem. So that's, uh, that's, that's the drive that made me sort of like give a, give a talk on big Africa. Because when I look at the thought, oh, I thought Africa should be there, but uh, it's not. So when in, in terms of uh, being ran. So the risk of big data overwhelmed. I mean, it's massive. Costs escalate too fast. It's very expensive. Uh, you need the infrastructure in place. Many sources of big data is privacy. I always tell my students that um, they always forget about the privacy thing. Some of the stuff you see, on Twitter, on uh, Facebook, and uh, regarding data that we get from different organizations, and they're able to sort of like spread it around. It's very critical. Students should be educated on that. I'm sure even employees as well should be educated on that. Privacy issues are very important uh, with big data. Okay, how big data impacts on IT? Uh, I've just gone back to the big data industry concept, whereby you just access, analyze, and use uh, uh, humongous volumes of data to specific te technology. The technology is IT. Uh, requires a whole new arm of data workers globally. So you need data scientists to be able to solve this problem. And uh, I've just given an idea, 2015, 4.4 million uh, IT jobs have been big data, and only 1.9 in the US. Where is Africa? Africa is missing there. Uh, U.S. will face a deficit, just listen to this, of 92,000 data scientists against its requirement of 490,000 by 2018. Mm -hmm. So they are falling behind as well. So you can imagine Africa. Uh, also, India will require 100,000 100, data scientists in the next couple of years, in, addi in addition to data analysis and data managers to support the first emerging big data space. This is a serious problem. In as much as we want to, we've got this vision of smart cities, we've got this vision of analyzing data, we're falling behind. This is just US, and I've highlighted India because it's a developing country. So that was gonna sort of like help as well, getting a nice mix. Okay, benefits. Of course it's got benefits. Uh, Real-time big data isn't just a process. I mean, uh, um, 
of storing uh, petabytes or exabytes of data. It's about the ability to make better decisions, to take meaningful actions at the right time. I've given you an idea of fingerprint prediction. Very critical. Uh, SKA as well. All these galaxies, I mean, uh, stars and stuff like that. How are they able to classify them? To make sure that this is the stuff that they, they, they sort of like want. That becomes sort of like important. Then fast forward, present technologies are Hadoop. It's very important. Give you the scale and flexibility to store data. Uh, map reduce. All these are sort of like technologies that are in place. Uh, and uh, everyone can sort of like uh, utilize them. Newest research find that organizations are using big data to target cost customer-centric outcomes, tap into internal data for information ecosystems. We've benefited from that as well. So big data is an important part of the six, four billion database and data analytic market. It's massive. I mean, it's a lot of money involved as well, and it's generating a lot of uh, sort of like income. Okay, future now. 15 billion on software firms only specialize in data management analytics. 15 billion. Uh, the industry is more than 100 billion and growing fast. I mean, it's uh, roughly twice as the software business as a whole. We've got a software business and we've got the big data on the other hand, but it's growing faster. You, before, people used to talk about softwares and stuff like that, but now it's been overtaken by the big data concept. All these are just uh, uh, the future things that uh, we, we sort of like have been looking on. McKinsey Global Institute has done a lot of big data issues. I mean, if you want to go through all the stuff that I'm presenting here and just to get a feel, you can read uh, some stuff from them as well. Uh, while African businesses are tapping into big data, the region has lagged the global trend. So that's what was disturbing to me. We've got all these things that are great about big data, but we as Africa are sort of like uh, lagging behind. Okay, uh, that's why I, my, my title is has the world of big data forgotten Africa? First of all, big data world does not capture the world so evenly. You can agree with me and you cannot agree with me, but I believe that that's not the case. I'm giving examples here. Facebook's original trending topics feed almost completely devoid news from Africa. There's nothing in Africa. You, you read just the uh, 1% of the whole 100, so people don't know about Africa. Uh, Twitter, failing to ever nearly catch on across the continent. You guys are on Twitter, uh, you know that as well. All these things are Europe and America, but Africa is sort of like left behind. Television news, I'm sure you guys have been to the US, you hardly hear about Africa. If you do, uh, it could be a lion maybe killing someone. <laughs> but. Um, uh, on a serious note, that's the problem, television news. You need Africa to be in the forefront as well. People in America should know about Africa. Oh, Africa, they're doing great stuff. The universities in Africa are doing great things. So that becomes a problem. A good example is when they missed the, the Ebola outbreak. No one picked it up in the, in the, in the Western world. Why is that? Serious sort of like, a, sort of like an epidemic. So they couldn't pick it up. So to me, it, I feel that we have been sort of like uh, forgotten in Africa. So if people aren't talking about Africa and aren't searching about it, um, does this mean there simply isn't much to cover in Africa? That's what the point that I was making. The fact that you don't read about these things, there's nothing on social media. Does it mean Africa is useless or there's nothing to write about about Africa? So that's uh, another thing. Smartphone adoption across Africa, Geopa, these are the key things in Africa. Of course, smartphones. Uh, someone was telling me that uh, each and every household is bound to have a cell phone, even in the rural areas. We could utilize that as well in terms of Africa. So those are the things that uh, I, uh, I have sort of like highlighted. So that's just a continuation. Big data offers an incredible glimpse into global society, uh, but there are nothing that's covered uh, on, on Africa. With special focus on Africa, like machine translation is possible to bring the continent back into the view of big data analytics. Now I'm, so I'm posing questions to you guys to say, if these things, we get it right, then obviously Africa might be or could be recognized in terms of uh, big data. Great emphasis within the data science community and expanding the effort of ensuring data sets, uh, geographical representation for the entire world is needed. That's my sort of like uh, 
another argument in terms of whether Africa has been forgotten or not. Okay, big data, key in unlocking Africa's development process. I've already highlighted that. We trail the US, Europe in terms of technology, but in as much as my previous slides were, I'm sure you guys were sort of like not hip about them, or you were, you didn't were demoralize. There's hope. Uh, we are trying as well. We've been asked, I mean, certain technologies, I like the, the issue of um, Kenya, where they develop an SMS so that people could be notified or alert the government of infections of Ebola. That's amazing. Big data, SMS, cell phone, they're able to utilize that. So that's, a, that, that's another concept. So I've highlighted Kenya because they've been doing a lot on big data. Nigeria, South Africa, and Zimbabwe, so they've got some stuff on that. All these data analytics are related to predictive modeling. I've, I've already I've sort of like highlighted what uh, predictive modeling is all about. So all these concepts are very critical. Uh, another example, hedge funds. Uh, have taken the lead uh, in terms of like uh, predicting uh, companies that are likely to do well and those that are not gonna be able to do well. Uh, so those are the kind of like good things that Africa have been doing. So we're closing, we're trying to close the gap, uh, even though it's a, at a slow pace, but uh, it's sort of like uh, promising. Okay, good example, I mean, I can't leave South Africa. Sometimes we started to use predictive analytics as well to process claims and spot fraud. Amazing stuff, given the data, the fraudulent activities that our insurance uh, companies are going through. They've done a great job. Discover as well, all those set a mark in terms of technological uh, sort of like advancements. They've done sort of like uh, complex health-related data in terms of predicting clients' problems and uh, in sort of like a minutes. That's a great stuff. Now they can able to do sort of like insurance claims in terms of uh, related to, to health. Farmers as well can be encouraged to subscribe to, uh, to sort of like analytics in terms of uh, our pesticides. There was an outbreak, I think, recently of the worm. That thing could have been mitigated if uh, there was a model in place that is able to predict that uh, the likelihood of this worm uh, spreading across the country is a certain kind of like percentage. So it's very important as well. So you we shouldn't leave them, especially given the fact that as a developing country, we rely a lot on uh, sort of like agriculture. So agriculture should be given that. African uh, security studies. They use social media in terms of uh, finding out as to who was likely to join uh, Boko Haram. These are the attributes that played a role. Drug addiction, fuel prices, education, water availability, and trees to personal safety. Those are the things that they came up with. So, but it helps them. Now they can, each and every country can address these kind of like problems been able to deal with this uh, 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 te te terrorism. Okay, this is just uh, another example, open data in the world. I mean, I've just given uh, sort of like examples. You can see that Africa is really, really struggling. If you look at the other sort of like uh, continents. So it's, uh, it's, it becomes very important that uh, we should be able to take this uh, kind of like uh, forward as well. Okay, what's the way forward regarding uh, all this? Uh, African corporations and government cannot afford to miss the lucrative opportunity of big data. That's to me, it's critical. This is our opportunity, we have to sort of like make use of it. Um, for progress in big data to be realized, the skills gap in Africa may need to be filled. Uh, that's critical as well. I did highlight to you that uh, if you're gonna be working on big data, you need skills in maths, stats, uh, even computing or com computer science or programming. So those skills are lacking in Africa. So we need to address the skills problem in Africa. I'm sure you guys, I mean, you, 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 um, you are not even aware of a, a university in South Africa that offers a big data program. I know that there are some that offers uh, just short courses. Imagine if we had a program like a bachelor's in big data, that would be great. Then it trains the student to be able to, to solve this kind of like uh, problems. So that's one thing that I, I picked up, that the skills gap uh, is a, it's a huge kind of like problem. Culture that uh, supports big data must adopt it. This is a very difficult task. I, I know that. 
Uh, imagine if you go to a primary school and just teach um, primary sc school kids about big data, just showing them how big data can be useful in the future. To me, that's where we should start, not just at high school or at university level. Primary school, you sit down with the kids, you show them, I mean, uh, explaining things to them, then they've got the concept of big data top of their head. By the time they reach high school, they're sort of like passionate about this problem and they're able to, to sort of like uh, solve all this problem that we currently face with in Africa. More stuff, uh, new information, innovative methods, uh, rapidly, it's sort of like rapidly growing communication is right, one of the finest steps needed to make transition in big data. You have to be innovative. You can't stick to the past. There are ad hoc methods that people still use in able to solve these problems. You need to advance as well. Utilize the artificial intelligence techniques, the machine learning techniques as well. It becomes important. It's great to use old techniques. I like the, I'm sure some of you are, are not working in banks, uh, whereby they still use uh, ad hoc methods in terms of our credit risk modeling. And when you try and convince them to use much more advanced techniques, and oh, this has been working for us for 20 years. But with this big data sort of like phenomenon, they're gonna be struggling as well. Maybe probably that's why we had a credit crunch uh, sort of like a few years ago, because we are not moving forward. We still believe in all techniques uh, that they work, that's fine, but it's always important to develop uh, new strategies as well. Okay, then, um, I, I was posing this question, is maths skills enough? Uh, I always get the students asking me as to, if I've done maths, I'm very good in maths, is it good enough to be a data scientist? The answer to me is no. You need all these skills there. Statistical theory, programming, ability to build data models, ability to work with systems that can process things, uh, process large amounts of data. Once you've got those skills, then uh, that's a way forward. Of course, maths, helps your logical thinking in order to master this. So it's important to me that if you're interested in this kind of work, you are able to do that. Communication skills, I've already highlighted that how important it is. I mean, you, you have to give talks to clients. You need uh, to convince them. Start off a project until the end. If you can't communicate these ideas to them, you're gonna be struggling. I hope I can communicate these ideas to you so that you <laughs> At the end of the day, you can tell oh, these communication skills are almost there, yeah, because uh, that's, a, that's a very critical sort of like skill. Communicate these ideas. I knew that I was going to be uh, giving this talk to you guys, and uh, you have to understand the stuff. There's no point of me coming with big uh, sort of like words and theories. At the end of the day, you don't understand anything. Communication becomes very important. Okay, just in summary, uh, we can exploit open and big data uh, to build and see new services. We can use existing information to improve them. To me, that's a must. Uh, smart cities, internet of things. We have a vision as Africa that uh, one day we'll have a smart city. To me, that's important, even in South Africa as well. So let's keep that at the back of our mind. But we need efficient and uh, effective modern problem solvers. We need you guys, we need the data scientists to be able to, to solve these things. Uh, we can build smart, small, large, context aware and adaptive applications, that's fine. Solutions are vertical or horizontal, we shouldn't worry about that. We must face multiple levels at smart city citizens. All this is just a concept of uh, making you understand as to how big data is, uh, is important. Incorporating a business model is mandatory. To me, that's very important to have a business plan as to how you plan your work as well. To me, it's very sort of like critical and it's, uh, it's important. Ideas and collaborations, very important. I know we guys, we like working on our own, but in order to progress, we need the US of this world. We need the UK as well. Collaboration becomes very, very critical. They're at an advanced stage. They've been doing these things for years. Let's utilize their expertise. Let's go to the US and find out how they've cracked it. So to me, that's very important as well. So big data obviously comes with considerable technical challenges. One of them lies in the data manipulation. You have got massive data. How do you manipulate it to be able to use the data? That's one aspect of it. The other one is the statistical inferential aspect. Now you have got your hypothesis. You have to decide as to, if you say that big data has got a future, that's a hypothesis. 
you should be able to prove that scientifically to show that, oh, he's got a future, I've done one, two, three, and, uh, and things are going sort of like fine. So it becomes very important. So those are the challenges that I came about that are, are related to, to big data. Oh, I nearly forgot one, science and politics. Uh, remember that we get funding from uh, the government through via parliament. Parliament, do they have an idea about science? Most of them, the answer is no. But what if, like an academic would go to parliament, beginning of the year, just brief them about science? Basic understanding of science. I know you guys are laughing because you think they'll be chased away. But um, to me, that's very critical. We need, we need the funding. We need to do these projects. But these guys don't care. If you present this stuff to them, big data, they say, oh, what's this thing? We don't need this. But if they had a basic understanding of how critical science is in moving forward, they're able to, to help. That's why I call it like a chalk and cheese. I mean, it's, uh, um, it's, it's, it's subject for debate. Okay, so this is just an idea, learning action and perception. That's the whole concept of uh, artificial intelligence and how it plays a role in terms of uh, learning systems. And I've just got to give you just two slides, just two on the Institute. Um, these are the objectives. When we started the Institute, they asked me to, to sort of like uh, give them an idea as to where I see the Institute and what are the objectives. Pan-African, to me it's critical. If you're gonna be, uh, we want to move Africa forward, we have to come up with a Pan-African Institute for Intelligence Systems, whereby we involve all these African countries in order to, to solve this problem. So all these ideas, system intelligence and cognitive computing, big data is there and deep learning, all these are concepts that uh, uh, we'll be sort of like uh, looking at. Global excellence, UJ is in, interested in global excellence as well. How are we recognize the brand UJ globally? So the institute, if it cracks it, the institute uh, UJ also uh, sort of like goes off. The good thing about this institute is multidisciplinary. I mean, I'm working with guys from uh, psychology, uh, neuroscience, uh, education, uh, interdisciplinary. It's very important as well. That's why I always tell people that the field that I, I, I did uh, I always, um, it's like we're playing in everyone's background because it's interdisciplinary. It could be economics, I apply artificial intelligence. It could be education, the concept, I apply it there. It could be transport, I'm there. So we're always there to be able to, uh, to, to play in, on, on everyone's back, uh, sort of like backyard. So that's very important. BRICS as well is critical uh, as well. I mean, it's, um, it's one of, of uh, the other universities that are part of it as well, which we, we thought are very kind of like a, are uh, useful. Okay, these are the projects that we are currently working on. Fraud analytics. I've already talked about uh, insurance companies, whereby they're trying to solve the, 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 the problem regarding fraud. I've got sort of like a number of students working on this problem uh, using social networks. We've got recommender systems. You guys, you like buying stuff. I mean, in terms of customer satisfaction, recommender systems are quite kind of like critical. Uh, it's important for like for the Amazons and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the, what's the other one? The online shopping thing of, of, of this world. Process analytics as well, in terms of event logs. HR analytics, uh, um, studying employee performance and retention. I've had problems with uh, my uh, members of staff whereby come performance time, the big, huge sort of like problems. Everyone says they've done well, they need a bonus and stuff like that. Develop a system to do that. I've even developed a system of, uh, of um, uh, predicting the likelihood that the student has cheated in a test. Whenever I start a lecture, I tell the student that, that you know, I've got an algorithm, and they believe me. <laughs> uh, but I've developed it, and uh, I still have to test it. But uh, um, it, 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 those are the things that are quite interesting when you're looking at this kind of stuff. I've even developed an algorithm, you guys I'm sure are soccer fans, of predicting who's gonna win the British League. And it gave me Tottenham. My students were rolling on the floor saying it can be, yeah. So those are the things that we can utilize with this kind of things. Of course, uh, we do have some time to have some fun, but uh, these are the things that are very critical. 
Also, I did highlight the challenges uh, and dangers that come with big data. From my experience working with students, the privacy issue is key, and uh, we should always consider that. Even you guys, if you're in sort of like working for companies, always keep that in mind. It's very critical. You could lose your job in terms of that. So proper education, to me, that's very important that the students are updated. Even though this looks uh, sort of like um, amazing, it's great, it's got benefits, let's keep in mind that it comes with challenges that can have an impact on your careers as well. So that's why I have highlighted that. Okay, key references. You don't have to worry about this, but this, um, these are stuff that I got. I mean, uh, I have to acknowledge these guys, otherwise they're gonna, they're gonna take me to, uh, they're not gonna be happy about it. But these are the, the papers that I've read. The good thing about this stuff, you guys have got access as well. You can read and sort of like familiarize yourself about it. It's a very important sort of like field. Uh, so I can post this to, the, to, to Costas in case people are interested. Okay. I like this quote from Alana Markle. Data is knowledge and knowledge is power. It is the power to put African needs and priorities first when determining domestic development agendas and plans. Apart from all the stuff that we do, Africa should be at the top of the tree. How does all this stuff benefit Africa? Because at the end of the day, if it does it benefit Africa, we lose students or we lose uh, expertise. They go to the US because they are working on a problem related to the US. If we're working on a problem in South Africa, I don't think you leave South Africa because you're working on a problem your own. So to me, it becomes very important. So I like this sort of like quote. And um, thank you for listening. And uh, I'll entertain questions, not tough questions. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, for sure.